For most students, the idea of having to solve a word problem tends to be scary and a lot of students pull away. In this video, what we're going to look at is a, um, a bunch of different examples of different types of application word problems that you may see when dealing with linear algebra and ways that you can approach solving that problem to make it less scary. So the first thing here we have is an example where you will need to write an equation that represents your situation and then solve. So these are going to be dealing with unpacking the sentence that you have so you can figure out what your equation is that you need. Okay, And there are certain um, characteristics and clues that your sentence will provide that will help you figure out what the equation is. You just have to learn or figure out how to um, recognize them. So first and foremost is we're going to go ahead and unpack this. So the first way you unpack it is you have to read it and it says if a number is decreased by 36 and the result is 76 less than twice the number, what is the number? So we have to pull this apart into three pieces, the left hand side, the equal sign, and the right hand side of an equation. The most important thing is to identify kind of where that equal sign is first because that's going to be your dividing factor between what goes on the left and the right side. So we're looking for some key terms. You're looking for phrases like is equal to, um, equals, the word is, or the result. So in this case we have the phrase the result is. So that is going to be your equal sign, which is your um, dividing factor between the left and the right hand side. So this is your equal sign here. Now what that means is that everything starting this sentence, so on the left hand side of this equal, this is the left hand side of your equation. Okay, so let's just look at this one and kind of unpack what we have. The first thing says if a number. So when we're looking at this phrase right here, a number, what we have to remember about this phrase is that this is going to be your variable. For most, we usually choose x. So here we are looking at our variable. Now in this case, um, is decreased by, that is going to be your operation. Okay, so this second part right here where it says decreased by, this piece right here is your operation. And in this case, decreased means subtraction. So we are subtracting something. Well, what are we subtracting? We're subtracting 36. So if we write out what this first part looks like, we would have a number, x, decreased by, so minus, 36. We then have the result is. Now on the other side is going to be this right hand side of our equation. So our sentence is really going to flow the way your equation is set up and looks. Okay. So here we have 76 less than. So when we look at this phrase here, less than, the van piece is a very special part. This is called a turn around phrase. And what it means is that the stuff written first, so this right here, um, that was comes first, this is written last. Whereas everything else, so this last part here, twice the number, this is going to be um, first. So a turnaround phrase is just that. It takes the stuff that's in the back and it spins it around so it comes first. Now if we look at this piece here, we have twice the number. Okay, so there's a few things we need to look at. Twice means multiply. So when we're looking at the number twice here, we're looking at the idea that you are going to multiply by two. 
Okay. The phrase, the number, well, this is referring to the variable you already identified, the 2x. So here we're going to have 2x. Less means subtraction, so minus. And then what are we subtracting? We're subtracting 76. So once you get your equation written, now all you simply have to do is solve your equation. So in order to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my x term here, and we are going to shift it across the equal sign. Because it's positive, we have to subtract. This is going to give us negative 36 is equal to x minus 76. Then I'm going to take my 76 and move it. Because it's negative, to move it says I have to add. So here we're going to end up with 40 is equal to x. So we set up our equation and we solve for the result. Let's take a look at another one. So here we have 3 times the sum of a number and 5 is equal to twice the number plus 5. So again, the first thing you want to do is kind of identify where that center marker is. And in this case, the phrase is equal to was the phrase we're looking for. Is equal to is going to be that equal sign of our equation. So that means everything here on the left is going to go before the equal. Everything after it goes on the right hand side. So here, let's break this down like we did before three times, okay? So when we're looking at this, this is going to be three. And when you see times the sum of, what this means is we are going to open a parenthesis. The sum of, so this right here, the sum of, what that tells you is that you are going to add the following phrase. And in this case, a number and five. Okay, so the sum of means we're adding. We're multiplying, so we've got our parentheses, which means we have to close it on the other side. And then what are we doing? We have a number and five. So just like before, a number here is going to be your variable. So we would write this as three, open a parenthesis, a number, so x, plus 5, close your parenthesis. We then have the equal sign. The stuff that comes next goes on that right hand side. So we have twice the number plus 5. So again, when we look at the word twice, remember we are talking about multiply by 2. The number right here is going to refer to the variable. So in this case, we're talking about x. Plus is just that, plus and then 5. So here, what we end up getting is we end up getting 2x plus 5. Now all you have to do is the same thing we did before, solve for your variable. So the first thing we need to do is distribute that 3 into your parentheses. So we get 3x plus 15 equals 2x plus 5. We're going to take this 2x and move it. Because it's positive, we have to subtract. So 3x minus 2x gives you x plus 15 equals 5. We need to take this 15 and move it. Again, we have to subtract. So we end up with x equaling negative 10. All right, let's look at this next one. So we have here that one integer is four more than three times a second integer. Their sum is 24. What are the two integers? 
So when we look at this one, we actually have two equations. And that's because we have individual sentences. So our first equation is coming from this first um, equation here. And then our second equation is coming from your second sentence. So we have to look at them as two individual things. So let's break apart the big equation first. So here we have one integer is. So when we're looking at it, this is right here, this is going to be your equal sign. So one integer, this is your variable. Okay, so we might call this piece x. And then we have more than. So just like before, we have this more than piece. So this is your turnaround. Three times a second integer. So when we're looking at a second integer, so this right here, this is a different integer than what we had before. We might call this one y. Now the reason I know that this is not the same integer is because I'm labeling it as a second one. That's different than the last two examples we had where we were referring to the previous integer stated. So in this one, um, we are labeling a second. Now I have three times a second integer. So in this case, if I were to write out my equation, I have x is equal to three times a second integer, more than is going to be plus and then four. So again, my turnaround phrase says the stuff written last goes first in the equation and the stuff that came first goes last. More is going to be your operation, so in this case it means addition. Now the second sentence here, their sum is 24, is telling you that x plus y is going to give you 24. So what you have to do is you have to take your first equation, so we're going to take this x that we know, and we have to plug it into the second equation so that we can solve for our variable. So we're going to go ahead and insert that in, and our new equation is going to become 3y plus 4 plus y equals 24. If we go ahead and combine my variables together, 3 plus y is going to give you 4y plus 4 equals 24. We're going to take this 4 and move it over. Because it's positive, we have to subtract. So we're going to end up with 4y equaling 20. So y is going to be 5. This is the first solution to this problem. Now we have to use that to find our second. So I would come back to this first equation here because it already tells you that x is equaling that. So we're going to use that x equals 3y plus 4 to give us our x result. So here x is going to be 3 times 5 plus 4. So x is 3 times 5 is 15 plus 4 gives you 19. There's your second solution. Alright, we can switch gears a little bit. This is going to be a slightly different story problem. Instead of just simply having to identify the sentence, now you have to be able to pick the important information out of an actual problem itself. So here we have that a real estate agency says that the current value of a 25-year-old home is 90000 more than twice its value when it was new. So it's important to notice that we have this sentence right here, 90,000 more than twice the value when it was new. Okay. 
So that's going to be a key component to help you piece together what your formula should be. It goes on to say if the current value is $310,000, what was the value of the home when it was new? So the other piece is that the current value is 310. So we need to figure out um, our equation based on the information given. So what do we know? Well, we know that the current value is $310,000. Okay, so we can kind of make a note of that off to the side. The big thing we need to work on is this um, sentence which gives us our equation. So we have 90,000 more than twice its value when it was new. So more than is that turnaround phrase. So here's that important phrase that we need to look for. So twice the value when it was new. So here we need to denote um, some variables. So when we're talking about our current value, let's think of this as the x, and when we talk about your new value, which can also be called your original value, let's think of that as your y. Okay. So we're going to use the idea behind just the two variables in order to help keep things um, situated. So we're working with this um, y value. So we have twice the value when it was new. So that's telling you that you have 2y more than is plus and it's 90,000. Okay. Now with this, we're talking about the current value was this math problem. So here we would say x is equal to this equation. Well, we also know that the current value is $310,000. So we can go ahead and work on solving. We know $310,000 is equal to my 2y plus 90,000. So we can go ahead and solve for y. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to take that 90,000 and move it over. Then we're going to divide everything by 2. So in this case, we're going to end up with $110,000 is equal to y. So it's the reason why we denoted these variables in the beginning is so that we know what the solution is that we found. And in this case, because we were looking for the original value, we know that we're done. Essentially, we figured out that the original value was Alright, this one says, if the rental price of a car is a fixed price per day plus 28 cents per mile, what was the fixed price per day if the total paid is $140 and the car was driven for 250 miles in two days? So there's a couple things that we need to do, which is pick out all of our important information. First, we know that the total paid was $140. We also know that our total miles is 250 and we know that our total days was 2. Okay. Now the fact that we drove it for two days is going to be important but it's going to be important at the end of the problem. So we have to be able to piece together our equation based on the information. Okay. So one of the things that we have here is we can identify um, what we're looking for. So first of all, we know that your total price 
is equal to your fixed plus your miles. Okay, that's essentially what we're getting at. So when you go into the rental store, we're talking about a fixed price per day plus your mileage. Well, in this case, we aren't sure what that fixed price is. That's what we are looking for. So that's going to be your variable. Now in this case, we know that our total was $140. Our fixed price is the X. And then we know that you're charged 28 cents per mile. So 0 0.28. And we drove 250 miles. So the only piece that's missing is that X value. So here we have 140 is equal to X plus 70. So we have that 70 is equal to X. Now here we are talking about money, but what's really important to remember is that this X represents two days. So remember we have this total days here, and I said that that becomes important at the end. Okay, so in this case, the X here represents two days. So what we really have is that 70 is equal to 2X. So we need to divide everything by 2. So in this case, we end up with $35 is your fixed price per day. Alright, this next one says that a high school graduating class is made up of 542 students. If there are 56 more girls than boys, how many boys are in the class? So the first thing that I would do is um, kind of you could identify the variables you want to use. Most students like using X and Y, so we can stick with that, and if you're going to do that, I highly suggest you make a statement that says X equals boys and Y equals girls. The reason that's important is because the only thing we care about is how many boys are in the class, and you always want to make sure that you answer the question that you're asked, not the question you assume you're being asked. So do make sure you keep yourself as clear as you can. Um, about what it is you're solving for. Now what do we know? Well, we know that your graduating class has to be made up of boys and girls. So this is going to be X plus Y equals 542. That's what we know. We also have um, this secondary statement which falls in right here. Okay, so our math statement that says if there are 56 more girls than boys. So in this instance, what we are looking at is we are looking at my girls equaling boys plus 56 more. So that's how you're going to get your two equations. Now just like before, we're going to take this equation and we are going to plug it in to the equation above. And so here we're going to end up with x plus x plus 56 is equal to 542. So here all we have to do is solve. I have two x's. If I move my 56 over, this equals 486. Divide everything by 2, and I have that x is going to be 243. Now remember, x was our boys, and so in this case, since we want to know how many boys are in the class, you would be able to state that there are 243 boys 
in the class. So based on the problem that we have, we didn't have to solve for both equations or both variables, we just needed to solve for one of them. All right, let's try another one here. So this one says, a mathematics student bought a calculator and a textbook for the course in statistics. If the textbook costs $49.50 more than the value of the calculator, and the total cost for both was $125.74, what was the cost of each? So again, identify some variables. So in this one, I'm gonna go ahead and say that T represents my textbook and C represents the calculator. So here what you can see is that I'm breaking out of the shell using variables other than X and Y. Always remember there's 26 letters in the alphabet so feel free to be creative. Um, you don't always have to use just X and Y. Now with that, there's some things that we know again. First and foremost, we know that your textbook plus your calculator has to equal your total cost of $125.74. Okay, that's a given. Now we also know that the textbook costs $49.50 more than the calculator. So in this case, we also know that your textbook is your calculator plus 49.50. So here, just like the previous, we're going to take your T and substitute it in. So here we're going to get C plus 49.50 plus C is equal to 125.74. So we're going to solve. So 2C is equal to 76.24 by moving our 49.50 over. Divide everything by 2 and we get that your calculator is going to be 38.12. Now with that, knowing what C is, we can come back to this equation here and solve for T. So we know that T is going to be 38.12 plus the 49.50. So my textbook is going to be 87.62. Now to check yourself, you can take your textbook and you can take your calculator and you could add them together and make sure that you come out with the total cost that you were supposed to get. All right, in this one, we're going to deal with a discount. So here, we have that Jeremy plans on buying a new pair of jeans. They are on sale for 20% off the original price. What was the original price of the pair of jeans if he paid $56.60 with the sale? So here, there's a few things that we need to know. So first, your sale price is going to be the original price minus your discount. So here the sale price is the price we paid. So this is the 5660. The original price is what we don't know, so this is going to be X. We're going to subtract. Your discount is 20% off, so whenever we take a discount, we have to take that off of the original. So this ends up being your 20%, so 0.20 X. Because the way we take a discount is we multiply your original cost um, by that percentage. So in this case, all we have to do is solve for x. So here we have that 5660 
is equal to 0.8x. Divide everything by 0.8 and we end up with $70.75 is the cost of the jeans. All right, let's look at one more here. Jeremy has the following scores for unit tests, and they're 76, 98, 87, and 91. What must he score on the last test to have an average of 90? So the first thing that we need to remember is the definition of average. Okay, so when we're talking about it, an average says you're going to sum up all your terms divided by the number of terms you had. So here we have one, two, three, four, and then five because we need to know what he needs to score on the last test. And we want the average of 90. So in this case, we would have 90 is equal to 76 plus 98 plus 87 plus 91 plus the unknown. And we're going to divide this by 5. All we got to do is solve for x. So in this case, we end up getting 450 is equal to 352 plus x. So we got this by taking and multiplying both sides by 5 and that gives you 450 and then adding up all your values gives you the 352. So when we solve we end up finding that 98 is equal to x. So to answer the question Jeremy must score a 98% on the last exam. Alright, now real quick as a reminder, there are some hints and phrases or ideas that you can use to try and help you solve these problems. When we're talking about addition, some of the phrases that you want to look for are things like what is the total, how many altogether, the sum is, okay, anything that's talking about um, calculating an end result. When we're talking about subtraction, we are talking about any phrase that means um, reducing your total. So how many fewer, how many are left, what the difference is, those kinds of things. Multiplication and division are a little bit trickier. Um, and the reason for that is because some of the phrases you would look for for multiplication are going to be the same as phrases you would look for with addition. Things like how many all together. Um, the biggest word that you want to look for when talking about multiplication is you want to look for the word times or product. Okay, those two words are used most common and both of which mean multiplication. With division it's the same thing, um, only you're looking more at the quotient or what are the factors of or how many parts per. So those are some helpful hints that you can use when trying to identify what operation you're using overall in your equation. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit longer than anticipated, but I do hope it answers some of the questions that you may have about solving applications. If you have any questions, please let me know. 
Otherwise, if you come across an application and you're just totally stuck, um, go ahead and send that off to me. I'd be more than happy to look at it and try and help walk you through it. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time.